Hello and welcome to today's Tearbind Sessions. Um, today I am your host, Helen Lee, and this is our guest, Uri Shaked, um, who is a chaos engineer, my favorite chaos engineer. Do you want to do you wanna <laughs> do you wanna introduce yourself, man? So yeah, hi. Uh, nice to be uh, uh, nice to meet uh, everybody and be here on the show with you, Ellen. Um, so um, I just learned that I'm a chaos engineer. Um, and I also <laughs> learned that uh, Helen really likes to play some music. So it just I happens do. so that I have my pen flute here, you know. <laughs> What a way to start. <laughs> yeah, I do like music. Um, if you don't know me, like I make a lot of musical instruments, but none so excellent as that pan pipe. Good job, Yuri. <laughs> so we're here today to talk about badge life and badge culture and share some of our favorite um, badges and shitty add-ons and all of the delightful things that come with that. So let's kick off here. Do you remember what your first um, exposure to badge life was? Yeah, actually, um, I have a friend who runs a, a CrossFit gym, and they have a logo of an angry panda. And okay. it was his birthday or something like that. I don't even remember. That was a few years ago. So I desi designed um, a PCB that looked like his logo, basically an angry panda PCB. And I shared it oh, on Twitter. You yeah Did you know I him? Shared it. yeah yeah i shared it uh i think i have i may have one here so like uh <clears throat> you know you get five of those when you manufacture them so you may still yeah, have yeah. one somewhere here but i think it might be yeah it's probably in another book so uh you can find it on uh, my twitter anyway so i shared it and people started asking me how they make their own uh, artistic, PCB, artistic PCBs. So I wrote a blog post about that, how to make artistic PCBs with uh, KiCad. Um, and then a uh, few months later, somebody tagged me and he said, uh, wow, your blog post was really helpful. And he also had like uh, a few badges he designed, uh, he designed a few shitty add-ons. And I think that was my the first time um, I, I learned about badge life just because somebody tagged me because of my uh, PCB art blog post. Yeah. So for those of you that don't know, the slightly unfortunately named SAOs um, <laughs> are a badge standard for an add-on. So a lot of hang on, if I if I show, hang on, I'll show you. I've got an example on my desk actually. Let me just switch cameras around. Um, okay. Let me just change to this, and then we'll flip to add this to the stream. Um, OK, so here we have, oh, no, not that one, like this. Oh, I'm, too, I'm too big. I hate it. Um, here we go. So this up here in the back, uh, in the top right, um, you've got a bunch of some badges that I just had lying around my workshop. And if you see on this one, which is the um, Open Hardware Summit from 2018 badge, there is a four um, a, like a, a four pin header here. And this is the standard for an SAO. And basically it means that you can add in all sorts of different cool things. Lots of them are blinking lights, right? But it's a standard for conference badges that allows you to uh, develop something a little bit smaller and a little bit easier um, to manage than in an entire badge. So that's what an SAO is. Um, for those of you that weren't aware, I thought I'd uh, show that. Let me just take my this one back off and now we're back to the normal view carry on yeah <laughs> <clears throat> so uh yeah so that's the, the first time i heard about this badge life and then uh a few months forward a friend sent me an email and there was like a small internal conference of some uh, israeli uh, geeks and hackers and um that friend, we were both uh, going to participate in that conference, and that friend said to me, hey, you know what? Um, why wouldn't we design a badge for the conference, like a hardware badge? And I was like, hell yeah. Um, so that, that, that was my first uh, foray into designing um, a conference, a smart conference badge. And it was actually the first uh, 
um, electronic products that I was actually designing for manufacturing. Like we made uh, 200 units or something like that. And uh, I wrote a really lengthy blog post about all the problems we encountered, but basically uh, we did everything, every single mistake in the book. And <laughs> what, uh, run, me, run me through a top, a top three biggest mistakes that you made during that first project. I will start with a classic one. We, we didn't know if the badges were going to be there for the conference until the <laughs> night before. Of course. I mean, <laughs> they, they, they arrived uh, two days before the conference. To, they, they just landed in Israel. And then we had to do a lot of paperwork to, do, to get the customs to sign off. And um, I think the, 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 the package was um, ready to, uh, we could collect the package something like 10 minutes before the DHL office closed for that day. So it was really like driving there and hoping that they will complete the paperwork <laughs> in time. That's so, not stressful at all. Not stressful. Like a nice calm stressful. experience. Well, I mean, I think then, that's what I think that's what everybody says about badge life and making their own conference badges. Is actually it's very relaxing. It's like a really relaxing hobby that you're never like terrified about constantly. That, by the way, that that was that that what yeah I could tell you didn't understand that that was total sarcasm. Like everybody. <laughs> No, I mean, Everybody gets it, very it, stressed about it. It's a very high pressure environment, but I think people yeah. enjoy that part of it. When we finally got to the conference venue, it was like uh, 8 uh, p.m. and we had no idea, like, we just received the badge and we had to flash 200 of them and we didn't really, um, really have a plan how to flash them. So we improvised some kind of programmer from what we had around and like we worked all night just trying to uh, get some version of like we had a lot of ideas for what we could do in software but eventually we just implemented the bare minimum and you know throughout the conference we kept like pushing updates and trying to just you know keep up and uh, um, I wouldn't call it a failure but uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I think the top thing was uh, 10 days before the conference, the badges are still in China. And then uh, the factory sends us uh, an, uh, a video where we see that the uh, screen, uh, it has it had an e-paper display. It's not working. Mm. And we realized we got the wrong connector. So no. Oh, no. Uh, it was like upside down. Uh, there are like uh, two variants with the contacts on the top and on the bottom, and we got the wrong one. So this means that all the connections were reversed. And the, the uh, thing <laughs> is, they sort of tried to tell that uh, to us before manufacturing uh, that like they think there is a problem with it, and we we are we are like no no it's okay we tested it we know it's fine, and then ten days before the conference like. Uh, Instead of having them ship it to us, they are like telling us, you know, the, 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 the screen is not working, guys. Uh, oh my goodness. The, the, the wrong connector. So 10 days, 10 days before the conference. Oh my goodness. And we are like, I'm, okay. I'm but... having like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting like a stress response just hearing this story. <laughs> and I, I wasn't even uh, home. I was like in my honeymoon in Japan and you know, my friends here, and then uh, I had my laptop opening the design file and trying to figure out how, how did this happen to us and what, what, what can we do? And, you know, I'm running to them from the train to the plane home, trying to find a solution. Uh, <laughs> Wild. So that's, Such a fun story. That's another example to every possible mistake in the booth. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we forgot to put a few uh, decoupling caps and pull-up resistors, so sometimes it would just, uh, when you used it, it, it had a vibration map motor, so when you used it, uh, the LEDs would uh, shut down because, well... That's hilarious. I'm sorry, that's very funny. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, I like the the vibration motors like um, m messed up the connections. That's very funny. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So, so show us. 
show us them. Um, you've you've got a lot of experience designing badge to, uh, badges from like your very first one. You're doing now not just badges, but you're doing puzzles. Do you want to talk to me a little bit about what that means? What is a CTF puzzle? So basically, um, CTF is just a kind of uh, it's uh, it means capture the flag, and it's that kind of puzzle where um, you have to use. Um, a lot of patience, reverse engineering skills, and uh, most of the times, uh, creative and out of the box thinking to solve. Uh, it, they are usually security related challenges or um, like uh, getting into a server or you know um, uh, making some software behave in a way it wasn't supposed to behave and usually there is like some secret that you have to extract from that server or from the mm. software and that's called a flag so usually it's like a string of like 10 to 20 characters that uh, you have to extract and if you do you prove that you solve the challenge so that's like the uh conventional or the standard uh ideas uh, idea of capture the flag and usually uh, it involves uh, reverse engineering and uh, disassembling or decompiling a piece of software to understand what it does. Or mm -hmm. if you have to, um, if this is like a more uh, security challenge with a server, um, you have to try uh, all like SQL injection attacks or, you know, to be creative and to find like the loopholes and think of how you can exp exploit that. So um, th that's like the, the idea in general. And then um, I'm doing a very specific kind of uh, capture the flag challenges, which are, um, I, I, I haven't heard about anyone else doing this kind. It's open source capture the flag challenges. Usually you don't get access to the source code. One of the challenges is mm. getting the binary and, and like reverse engineering yeah, yeah, to understand yeah. what it does. But yeah. in my uh, in my challenges, I actually give you away the source code. Uh, you have the full source code of the firmware, and yet you have to. Uh, it's not trivial to. It's far from being trivial to find the flag to extract it. Um, and uh, usually, you're, like the flag is just. Um, one of your goals, and then you have um, further goals yeah. that are even more challenging. Like, you capture the flag. Perfect. Now find a way to put a different flag <laughs> instead of the original one. <laughs> It's a good one. I, it's, it's quite it's quite a chaotic badge, that's for sure. I've got some comments here. Um, Andrew says, um, shout out to KringleCon, um, which is apparently a great security focus capture the flag convention that is online. All right. So if anybody's interested in this, I will also say um, there's a really great talk that I would highly recommend. There's two things that I would recommend people. If you're interested in this and don't know that much about it, there's a mini documentary that Hackaday did um, that Sophie Kravitz presents about badge life um, and that was based at they shot uh, they shot and interviewed some interesting people at badge life um defcom um I, I forget what year they did it maybe 2019 i don't know anyway whatever sophie kravis and hackaday did this great documentary would recommend that and the other thing that i'd recommend if you don't know much about hardware hacking and you're interested in just understanding what on earth it even means, these kind of terms, reverse engineering, hardware hacking. I watched um, a really nice talk by Sami Kumar um, recently um, about, about um, hardware hacking. There's also a reverse engineering podcast as well that I like to listen to with um, hosted by Alvaro and Jen, I think. So would recommend having a listen to those, but yeah. Shout out to Kringle Khan. Shout out to Kringle Khan with this horrifying Santa there. Thanks, uh, thanks, Andrew. <laughs> is it like an online conference or is it a physical? Apparently conference? so. Yeah, it's an online conference. That's what. I, or at least you know, I'm trusting the. I'm. I'm, I'm trusting. I'm trusting the. Um, the opinions of, of this guy called Andrew with this. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'm. I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> yeah, he says it's an online security focused capture the flag convention. Um, so yeah, definitely go and check that out if you're interested as well. So yeah. Can you cover for me for a second? I will try to see if I have that badge to show you. So please. Cover. Yeah, for cover sure. I can cover for you. <laughs> 
All right. Well, let's um, show you a couple of my the fun badges that I got in the in the past. If I can switch, and see if I can do this. If I remove this and add this, look at this. This is my down screen. This is not Uri. This is a bunch of different badges that I've got, including this really awesome um, badge from the Open Hardware Summit in 2018. And um, this was designed by Drew and some other people. Who designed this? Michael Welling. Michael Welling. There we are. From and the Alex Camilo. And Alex Camilo. Here we are. We've got, we got some input from the cheap seats here. Did you want to put your head in? No. <laughs> All right. Cool. So this is an e-ink e badge that was done for OHS um, 2018. This is a real fun one here. Look at this bad boy from, from Hackaday Supercon. This was a good one. But to be honest with you, a lot of my badge collection comes from um and from these mini badges as well i've got loads of them i've actually lost quite a few of them as i've um, as i've moved but these ones are really fun so this is um this is a pixelated heart and um, that obviously doesn't have a battery in it but luckily for you i've got some batteries over here on my wild swatch workbench let's see what i can see here this actually the reason i'm going to show you this is because it's such a fun little cheap sensor as well let me pop the battery in and um, assuming so, oh, look at that. I love having all the right types of battery just on my workbench. So this is this is, um, this is is a badge that was designed by Nick uh, Pizarro, who's um, High Energy Beams on Twitter. He's a Noisebridge member. He's made loads of cool badges as part of Noisebridge. In fact, that's one of his as well, thinking about it. That's the Noisebridge badge that Nick made. But this is just such a fun one because um, if you flip it over, it, it, it behaves like it's got, an, you know, you imagine it might have an accelerometer in it. Um, but because it every time you move, it, it beats the heart beats like a, a fade, and I think that's just such a cool, fun um, example of something that can be done. If I flip it over as well, you'll see the components on it. All we've got we've got four SMD LEDs and the associated resistors. We've got a three a console battery holder, and then we've got one of these things, which is a lovely, which is a really underused sensor, in my personal opinion. These cost like less than a dollar, even if you buy them from Adafruit, um, and um, and essentially they're like little trigger switches. So all it is inside of it um, is there's a, a metal cylinder here, um, and on the inside you've got a really cool spring um, inside. So every time you move, if you if you if you trigger it, essentially all that's doing is the spring is moving from side to side and like triggering and just like connecting, right? So it's a very very simple, very cheap switch that you can get um, in quantity one from Adafruit even. So it's like really worth um, having that in your PCB armor. Um, in your PCB war chest of things that you can make. What else have I got here that I can show you? So this is the this is a fun um, this is a this is the skull PCB um, that Uri has been making. Um, and the fun thing about this is I've got, you can three D print all these different um, glasses for it as well. All right, let me see if I've got Uri back. Let me remove me and remove and add Uri back in. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the good news is that I found uh, one of those. It's not the one that I wanted to show, but still, like, um, it, it will probably, and hi, uh, it will probably uh, give you a good idea. So uh, I think one of the uh, the more important features of this badge is uh, missing here, but there you go. This is the badge. And, nice. Um, Thanks. And one of the, uh, the the coolest features you you see those those are like uh, keyboard keys. So uh, Cherry MX, if you know uh, those like mechanical uh, keyboard keys. Yeah. So we had like um, a bunch of nice. keycaps, and everyone could like I spelled Uri uh, with the keys. Everyone could pick their own keys. And oh, that's adorable. Imagine I love it. somebody walking with uh, two space bars and a shift between them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So you could, you could, you had. Did you have like a big box of different keycaps that you could choose from as part of that? Yeah, we had like uh, twenty keyboards nice. that we just ripped off all the keys, and then you could choose whatever you wanted. And, that's um, real cool. Yeah, that's the the back side of it. Very cool. Trying to decipher it, right? And there's your vibration. Where's the vibration motor? Oh, it's on the front side. There yeah, we are. That that's one, the. Yeah. And this is the. And uh, where's your SAO? So you got your SAO, and you've got your. 
um, vibration motor there. And that's the vibration motor that dislodged those two LEDs. Is that correct? Yeah, the, the ones that are like uh, next to it. And then uh, you can see here, this one was, uh, we actually, uh, let me see if I can get a camera. You can see here, like yeah. uh, I added a, a capacitor. Uh, I don't know if it. Yeah. I see it. That's a classic bodge. I can see it. Yeah. So yeah, good that's, job. that's how we fix that uh, after the fact, adding this uh, capacitor there. You know, you got to do what you got to do. Absolutely. Now, what have you got on your desk to show us today? So um, I know that you've got some fun things. Yeah, so we were speaking about uh, Bezodons, and uh, actually this year, uh, we last year we were also designing a badge for the same conference uh the second mm -hmm. edition this time What's we the name of the didn't... conference uh it's some internal conference uh, like oh it's internal. you can't find it online or something like that so uh but you'll see it on the badge in a moment so uh this is what we tried to do for last year and mm -hmm. i don't have it here but the idea this is actually what are those keys level. are they silicon what what are they? No, I've not seen them. What just, what are they? Just are they cool thing. looking? They're cool looking. Um, they're, are they yeah, SMD I mean, buttons? They're just like yeah, these are SMD buttons with like cool covers. But then I think cool. the killer cool feature. Covers. And yeah, I don't have it with me right now, but this is actually a Lego brick here. Ah, oh, killer! And you had a Lego person that stands here, so everybody could pick their Lego person, and then that would uh clicking on the person would click on that uh, button so wow. that was a part of the interface that's lego person that's and, really cute i love it and we think and we really and, and by the way this is like the new sao standard uh yeah yeah the six pen one and this is like a prototype uh, that uh, we made. That's like the, the first prototype. And here's like 3D printed buttons instead of those uh, fancy uh, AliExpress ones. <laughs> I like the AliExpress ones. I like the 3D printed <laughs> ones as well. They're very cool. Very cool. So, so, so I think the, you've got like, yeah, go on, go on. So, so, so uh, the sad thing about it is that uh, we still have like the box with the 200 and something uh, badges because of uh, coronavirus. Uh, that conference never happened last year. Um, Tell me about but, it. Open hardware summit. I feel the pain. <laughs> like, yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we did design some add-ons for it. Uh, like, uh, this is one of the uh, persons from the team. He designed this add-on which shows you it's like a map of the let me put it on i don't think it's even functional i'm not sure let's that's try cool to. yeah it just like shows you uh it was supposed to show you wait are uh, they all oh, individual the, all those little white blobs they're all smd leds are they no they're they're like oh, so there's... the leds scattered so um you can basically oh, yeah like, i see like i see certain countries yeah and we used here an STM chip because before those mm -hmm. became impossible to get yeah, right. to obtain. You could sell but all then, of them now for <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, we have like five boards. If everybody, if anyone wants, uh, we have five boards with those STMs. <laughs> but then, yeah, exactly. Um, you can auction off the STMs to the highest bidder. <laughs> like it's the new Bitcoin, STM silicon. <laughs> <laughs> so. Our plan was uh, these badges, uh, they run a circuit Python, and mm -hmm. we wanted to let people, like, yeah, there is uh, it's a bit How did you right find now. that from a battery, from a power point of view, though? Like, I think circuit Python's pretty power heavy, like, pretty de demanding. Did you have to change the batteries that often, or? So the thing is, it's e paper, and uh, you can just, mm. oh, it just showed my name. Nice. Uh, it's nice. an e paper, so you can basically, uh, here is the menu. So I can basically uh, switch it off, and now I switch it off, and it still displays. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. You don't really care about the power consumption uh, yeah. because people just switch it off when they don't want to interact with it. Um, yeah, yeah, but then yeah. we wanted, we wanted um, some way for people to be able to write their own apps, right? 
right now there are like a few built-in apps like Clock and uh, an app that would let you update your name through Bluetooth. So we wanted mm -hmm. people to be able to build their own apps and share them. And, and we were thinking about creating some kind of, you know, app store and all of that stuff. You know, some pages do that. Mm -hmm. But then we decided to go a totally different way. Instead of using some online app store, we decided to uh, switch to offline app distribution. And how would that work? How would you like uh, share an app with your friend? What would you imagine the medium would be to share an app with a friend? I can't think. What? No, just tell me. <laughs> what did you use? You are sitting in a conference. You have your badge on you. Yeah. You don't want to take it off, obviously. And your friend is sitting next to you, and you want to uh, give him a copy of that app that you created. So how do you physically give him a copy of that app to install on his badge? How do you physically do it? Do you why is it like an SAO to SAO data transfer? Like what have you done here? Yeah, but you don't want to have to wire yourself with your friends. You want okay. to just be able to give it away, so that your friends will be able to install it on their badge uh, whenever they yeah. want. Whenever they... So how would you? Timon's Timon's guess is NFC. Hello, Timon's girl. Nice to see you. Yeah, but then His guess is NFC. Weird if you had to go like that to people you don't know, All right. you just how how is it? It's not NFC. How did people do it before the internet? Like the sneaker, <laughs> like the sneaker net, right? <laughs> like the sneaker net before the internet or like at the same time, as in like physically you would take a data device and pass it. Like what? Like a, a floppy disk, for example. Like a floppy <laughs> disk, exactly. So we have no. a floppy disk shitty at no. all. That. No. That plugs onto the bed. It's a circus no. device. No, my and joke then, was true. Oh my god, it is true. <laughs> and then the badge, I don't know if this one has an app on it, but the badge is supposed to recognize it and run the code. That, uh, yeah, I think it has something, but this is, yeah, you see this my is... amazing app, but now it won't work. Wow, the display, so you could see. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So no, Jason no. guessed infrared, old phones used IR, yeah, for sure. And then yeah. so how but is what's, have... how is it actually okay, aside from the aside from the form factor, it's an SAO, a floppy disk SAO, that mm -hmm. what you write to that SAO and then you give it to your friend and they plug it in. Is that correct? Exactly. So it has uh two Wild. prompts. Um yeah, uh, the the green one will be easier to see. It has two onboard e prompts. And you have yeah. a solder bridge here, which you can uh, solder to write protected. Oh, yeah, I see two, that. Yeah. Two e prompts, yeah. and uh, then there is this solder bridge you use to write protect them. And yeah. uh, some of the designs, uh, this one also had an uh, LED that would show you whenever it's reading or writing from the I square C bus. So you have That's 64 so kilobytes of storage you can put. Whatever you want, apps, malicious apps. Yeah, that's hilarious. Wait, I've got a couple of questions. I've got were those custom floppy did custom? I'm assuming like, did you get those custom made from China as well? Or... Yeah, yeah, I designed it. And then we've got. I just, I just downloaded the. Um, I, I went to Wikipedia to floppy disk, and yeah. they had a good uh, vector registration, and then I yeah. converted it into a PCB. This is the result. It looks fantastic. So hang on, Thanks. give me a second here. Tell me about the finish on that PCB. How did you achieve? So you've got hold it up again on the on the thing. So we've got we've got here, we've got the uh, the blue, we've got the white, and then we've got the silver. Tell me how you achieved those three finishes. So talk me through and that. So the blue blue is the blue is the fiberglass, like the the, the board, right? And then the white no, is so, the so <clears throat> The, the board itself is actually yeah. uh, greenish, brownish. So blue yeah. is uh, the solder mask. Oh, the blue is the solder mask. OK. This is the copper, which is also covered with uh, uh, solder. It's Hassel yeah. or her uh, solder leveling. 
And then it's hard to see, but there is also um, here the HD logo. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, wait a second. Get I will a try closer. to. I'll try to set up the light so you can see it. Yeah, you, you can probably see. Oh, it. nice. It's probably mirrored, but yeah, now uh, you can. You should be able to see it. Yeah. I love so that. the HD. Thanks. Yeah. The HD is actually. Uh, copper that has been covered with uh, the solder mask. But yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it gives, uh, it blocks the light and it gives it a little uh, different shade. And then the white is just a silk screen. We've got a few comments that are really enjoying it. So it's technically, is it technically a 0.25 inch floppy disk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so. that's very funny. Very funny, Andrew. Very funny, Andrew. And Steve really says awesome. it's really cute, and I fully agree. It's, 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 it's made my day a lot better knowing that that exists in the world. We also um, made a full size one just because, you know, because we I had to. One. <laughs> I love it. I'm actually uh, in the middle of doing an SAO2, a silicon free SAO. Um, which um, I'll share. it's going to be very stupid. <laughs> it's a very ridiculous SAO that completely silicon free. Yeah, yeah. I will. I haven't. I haven't done it yet, um, and I haven't finished it yet. I'll share it on Twitter after I finished it. But I think you'll. I think it'll make you laugh. That's for sure. <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Show us. Show us, show us your, you've got, there we go, look at that, hello. I didn't make it, it's, uh, no, I know. Uh, one, of the, one of the conference participants uh, made it for the conference that it had happened. Yeah. So I, I think that's the best thing when people actually, participants started making their own, uh, their own uh, badges. Uh, it was, this one is an antivirus somebody made, so you could install it. <laughs> And then yeah. uh, you can see it here, but it's supposed to have this connector to the bed here, and then another connector where you can put your uh, other CD add-on. So it sort of intercepts the communication and sees if you inserted an infected floppy disk or something like that. Wow. Oh, I see. That's real clever. I like it. I like it very much. So I think you've got another. Um, challenge to show us as well another s um on, based on an 80 tiny 85 do you want to show us mm -hmm. one of your coins um so on your yes. dying camera let me let me um let me add this Ooh, wait hang on let me change the thing first da -da -da -da. Yeah, yeah. First, let me add add you in the camera. stream there we go you've got a secret camera show me what you've got in the you secret camera the glass from the view uh, okay, <laughs> we don't, so, mind, don't worry um this was actually a cdf i designed we wanted to have for the original conference but then we didn't even we, we almost didn't get a badge sometimes so i did it after the conference and of course the camera wouldn't oh, it focus so it's a super small CTF, and um, mm -hmm. it carries an 80 tiny 85 and uh, the uh, CT add-on connector, and also a very handy reset button because uh, you are likely to uh, get a chip into weird states when you try to solve the CTF. And there is also yeah. a small uh, LED. So. Well, the, the first challenge is just, you know, to uh, light up the LED. And then there is also an uh, after dark version. I made also, an, uh, if you know Osh Park, they have this cool yeah, so, just attach it. So, uh, so let me explain what after dark is. Uh, after dark is a PCB finish. Um, and the fiberglass is a black fiberglass underneath. So it's FR4 black fiberglass. Um, and then they'd use a clear solder mask on top of that. So what that means is that you can see all of the traces, you can see the copper pore and then underneath it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's black, the, the, the black that you're seeing on that PCB is the actual piece, is the fiberglass itself. So you're able to see all of the copper around it. It's actually kind of a fun thing to do for challenges because you can see all of the traces that are going places. Anyway, so yeah, that's what After Dark is, just uh, if you don't know that. And that's a Osh Park finish. So yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, the first time I've seen this in an SAO was the that Lego figurine, and I think it's yeah. like one of the best oh, SAOs. Those Lego minifigs, oh, they're so fun. Yeah, I think he's got some in stock still now again because he was out of stock for a really long time. But I think he's selling them again on his Tindy store. Could be wrong about that. Sorry if I am. So go and anyway, buy before they run out because of no. Yeah, <laughs> they're really cool. They're really cool. Yeah. And uh, then, um, so you basically attach this to your uh, badge. And our idea in the conference was to have this uh, small LED to indicate if you um, if you are cool because you managed to solve the challenge. So uh, you could just you know attach it to your badge, uh, do whatever you do to hack it, and then the LED would go on. And everybody would see that you are a really, really hardcore hacker. And then um, there was like a follow-up challenge where you would have to blink the LED so uh, to show everybody that you are next level hacker. And it also has like uh, a flag hidden inside that you have to somehow extract. Um, so unfortunately, it wasn't ready in time for the conference, so we haven't tried it in the conference. But then. A few months later, I launched it uh, on Tindy as well. Uh, just uh, you know, uh, sharing this with the world. Um, it's uh, the, the code for the riddle is open for on GitHub. The design is open on GitHub, and there is even like a schematic that shows you how you can build your own version on a breadboard. So uh, um, if you just Which want I was to going to do. <laughs> Uh -huh. I was I was gonna do that, but my but um it's uh, as as some of you might already know there are uh, it's not that easy to get hold of silicon things these days. Um, I do have two eighty tiny eighty fives arriving in the post today, which I paid way more than I should have. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to bread it, breadboard it today in the session because it didn't arrive in time. But it's um, I'm going to do it though. I'm going to breadboard it. I'll put it on Twitter afterwards. It'd be fun, like a breadboard hardware challenge. Yeah. Anyway, Karen. <laughs> first person who solved it actually did it on a breadboard. So um, when I launched it, I just uh, I just announced a challenge and gave people thirty days to you know submit solutions. And I think the first one yeah. came within twenty four hours or something like that. Uh, just some guy, random guy, built it on, and he actually sent me a, a log of. Uh, a write-up of everything he has done, and it was so great. He created a Python uh, notebook uh, with all of the steps and wrote like scripts that uh, would solve everything uh, automatically. So you just have to plug the bed, press play, and watch the Python uh, notebook, and it had explanations for each of the steps. It was really uh, a good write-up um, of how he approached it, and I think that's one of the more satisfying parts to, um, after you release something like uh, this uh, capture the flag or this uh, scalp, um, to read how other people are approaching it and what they are, yes, this one, exactly. This one. And, wow, it uh, looks good with my pink nail varnish. I should paint my nails uh, more often. And does it have a battery in? No, it doesn't. I can find. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it doesn't have a, a battery. In. I can find a battery then. Carry on. I'll try. I'll try and find myself a battery. Cool. So uh, I think w one of the coolest thing for me, at least, is to receive the solutions of other people and uh, to read about their progress. I mean, uh, one guy just sent me yesterday. Uh, I, I will read it to you. So find this message. So he said, um, really fun and challenging. Today I lost, that was about a scalp. Today I lost four hours untangling the code. <laughs> Suddenly, it was lunch and my breakfast was still in front of me. Yeah, I have, I've, uh, it's, it's, I've heard lots of people get really addicted to this. Let me see, I've, I've only got a t the wrong form factor. I've got, only got like the tiniest, um, I've, got, I've got the wrong type of um, three volt You're battery. You're an engineer. I don't see any I problem. Know. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to. I'm trying to smush it in so it works, but it's not apparently connecting. How do you know it's not tweezers. connecting? Well, that's because <laughs> I know it's not connecting because I can see it with my eyes that it's not connecting. It's like one of those absolutely tiny three V batteries, and I'm trying to like, 
you know, like the the clip bits here. Sometimes I can make these. If if I push mm -hmm. those down with a pair of tweezers, I can still make the connection. But at the moment, it's just rattling around inside. So I'll just say it. Life of an um, engineer. <laughs> I'm not an engineer, mate. I'm definitely a hacker. <laughs> like I think engineer um, it implies a level of pro prowess that I do not have. I'm just a bodge jobber. I'm just an experienced bodge jobber. Um, I don't, I'm yeah. not sure about that. I think engineer is more <laughs> like um, a, a person who has like uh, this methodical thinking about solving problems. Like. Yeah. Um, you have a problem and then you start thinking, okay, so how do I fix it? And you learn, you, you try to break it down to smaller steps and figure out sometimes out of the book solutions uh, for those yeah. steps. Like it's true. using a different kind of battery and then uh, forcing it to work with tweezers. I think that's engineering or WD-40. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so. Um, anyway, carry on. Um, I, I designed this uh, capture the flag uh, uh, capture the flag uh, riddle challenge, and then people started solving it. And I think it's also a bit of addictive to design those. It's hard. I, I spent like a week designing this one, um, just you know figuring out uh, the right balance between uh, challenge and user experience. And I think that's the hardest thing, making it I agree. Oh. hard but still like not frustrating does it work when you yeah it was yeah when i put it in it started flashing and when you touch the grill on the back of its head does it keep flashing there is like this small grill that should <sighs> Damn it. keeps it keeps making and breaking the connection because it's like absolutely the tiniest battery of all time <laughs> okay it's like one of these uh... watch batteries uh don't you have like uh a packaged one because they have batteries inside batteries included batteries um, were included yeah th that was really a tough thing to get the batteries shipped from china to uh to oh, the yeah, US. For sure. yeah so if you are uh doing any kind of hardware product uh try to avoid batteries included if you need lithium batteries yeah it's oh, yeah. to work I did. Yeah, I is... smushed. I smushed it good. It's like I smushed it good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me blink back at you. So yeah. Right. So this, the moment you, Ooh. yeah, that one has like, uh, I, I took it off the camera because it has, uh, it could reveal some of the solution. This is, uh, Ooh yeah. Wee. yeah. I mean, uh, it wasn't really supposed. Let me, this is how you factory reset it. Just uh, touch it while you pull, uh, you put a battery in. So now it's factory reset. No more spoilers. No more spoilers. You were about to yeah. spoiler everything. Actually, I did have um, a couple of comments come up here. Let me just switch back to, um, here we are. Look, we've got this guy says, I'm thinking to clutch the flag on the skull project. Should I try? Can you tell a bit more about the challenge only to me? <laughs> You'll keep the secret. I think um, I think we uh, we we can't keep the secret, but you should definitely try and, and capture the flag in, unless you what unless you value your time and you don't want to get into it. Um, yeah, in, I, into I think a big, like into um, a big challenge hall. <laughs> it's not an easy challenge. Like uh, it's it's very unique in two ways. One way is that it's I, I told you about it. Like the source code is open. It's like. 350 lines of code, and uh, you know what? Uh, I can uh, share my screen and show you the code. Uh, just a moment, I will make sure I show you the right variation, not the one with the flag inside or something like that. Um, Leon okay. says, "Hooray for AT Tiny 85, 16 years old and still useful." That is wild. 16 years old, the AT Tiny. I had, I had no idea it was that old. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's fun. Uh, even older than the iPhone, I think. Um, Wait, hang on, there we go. Right. That one's a good one. Sharing my screen. Can I do it? Right. Oh, yeah. I've, if you share your screen, I can add it in. Just click the share. There we go. Do I'll you add the, you in. Do you see my screen? 
Yeah, look at oh, that. Yeah. Here we go. So yeah, this is the source code for the skull. It's uh, 329 lines of code. And um, there is like a soundtrack that you should uh, listen to while reading the code. But it's definitely going to take longer than this uh, soundtrack. And um, then uh, you can see this is like a code that makes the skull. There is like this function that looks like a skull. Um, and a lot of... Very cool. uh, Thanks. And a lot of other any, stuff. Are there any cl any clues you can give us in this? Let me scroll back up. Scroll back up. Yeah. Well, even more? Huh? Like where? Yeah, yeah, more. I want to oh, to right to the top again. I want to see the right to the top. Here we go. And then this firmware is released under an open curse license. That would have, that's what made me laugh. <laughs> OK, keep going, keep going. And I, wait, 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 you've got a recommended sound track while reading the code. Yeah. Okay. You've got to explain that. What's going on here? So you're going to spend a lot of time reading this code and you know, you have to be in the right mood. So um, <laughs> this is actually, I will let you guess. So just throw any name of song or soundtrack and then I will tell you that, that which one this is. I would say um, the obvious choice would be some kind of like Finnish heavy metal, um, <laughs> perhaps, or it could be it could be Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, I don't know. Tired, I don't... But no, um, Any... It's actually <laughs> it's actually uh, Atom Heart Mother by Pink Floyd. Do you know this one? I do know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. My my dad was super into um, my dad was super into Pink Floyd, so I know quite a lot about Pink Floyd. Um, but yeah, I, lo I love. I've, I don't think I've ever seen a recommended soundtrack in source code before, and I don't think I've ever seen an open curse license. Can you tell me a little bit more about this open curse license? What what kind of punishments uh, have you got in mind? Eternal or just in this fleshy? Um, mortal realm, you know, or do you get punished for the rest of your, you know, entire, the rest of your life of your soul? Um, so, you know, uh, you know, Chris from uh, Crowd Supply, right? Um, I, I'm aware of Chris from Crowd Supply, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I've let, met him. Let me put this uh, Crowd Supply. So, um, he, he helped me. Um, uh, do some uh, touch-ups to the uh, campaign and he is really good with uh, coming up with the uh, punish like uh, it's thanks to him that I learned what uh, where is that where did I go <laughs> yeah I, I oh interesting I found a bug if you zoom in the, the campaign description disappeared oh really just oh yeah just That's click on the bug. details though oh, yeah Oh, Click on details. Right. so it's not a bug. It's just uh, uh, all right. It just uh, so, it just dimension. It just um, you know, words. It, uh, <laughs> it, it, it um, it's not them. a bug. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, so thanks to Chris, I learned what a trephine was. Trephine, trephine. I don't even know how to pronounce it. So uh, yeah, trepanning, <laughs> trepanning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah so, yeah. so yeah. So I think uh, when it comes to uh, punishment, uh, I will just ask Chris. He, he will probably have some good ideas of uh, how you can be punished and whether it's like a temporary punishment I, or eternal. I guess it depends what you do. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but I think the skull would come up with some some suitable punishment. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there is always the Skull Twitter account, uh, which you can... Uh, the Skull Twitter account is very rude. I like it. It's uh, it's, it's chaos. It's the most chaotic... Uh, what, yeah, you, what did you show she's us? She's not rude. Week? She's just being yourself. You know, she... Oh, she, I she, like it. She's just being free. She's just being free. <laughs> yeah. Scroll down. Let's look, at the code. Let's, look at the, let's look at the code again. Yes. Let's keep going, Diane. Oh, so you put the flag one there. You find the flag, you put it in there. All right. Yeah, I mean, obviously the uh, version that you get when you get it doesn't have flag one error. It's here, it has the actual flex ring, which I can't tell. 
Um, of course but, not, yeah. But this is like the first flag that you need to somehow extract. Um, yeah. But before you do that, you just need to hypnotize the skull to make it uh, do something else than blinking. Uh, actually, uh, let me show you what it looks like. Uh, so there is like uh, this uh, page. Is so that? this is the, so this is what it this is what it comes like out of the box, right? Is that correct? Yeah. And then yeah, you need exactly. to hypnotize the skull into doing something. So, so, yeah, so this this is what it comes out of the box uh, doing this when you press the back of yeah. the, uh, her head, and yeah. um, once uh, you do that, you need to hypnotize it. So by hypnotizing, uh, oh, I got a typo. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad we had this session. Now I know that I got a typo here. This is a proofreading session. It's a live stream proofreading <laughs> session. <laughs> so we need to do hype. Oh, I didn't. It's hypnosis. Hypnosis. Yeah, 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 that's fine. I don't have a typo. Hypnosis. So yeah, you have to get okay. to the right eye to rapidly blink three times exactly yeah. as shown below. So what I'm guessing is that you have to reflash you have to re you have to edit the firmware somehow and then reflash it onto this. So um, one of the things, and I think uh, it says here, yeah, you should solve like all it. the steps without any electrical oh. connection to the skull or any of the. That's quite unusual. Of the well, I think most people you have like most capture the flags that involve some kind of electrical devices, right? You know, you have to sniff that. Sniff the uh, sniff the hardware or like give, you know like solder on. So this is so this is a software only CTF. No, exactly. it's not software only. Uh, but okay. I, can, I can't tell uh, why it is because that would give away some of the solution. Um, but yeah, you have to you have to make it do this, and okay. then after it does this. Uh, you have to capture the flag, like to to, to find this uh, value of uh, this flag one, and then once you get this, you have to control its mind. So uh, you have to make it uh, slowly flash its eyes, meditating. Uh, okay, I think I've just lost that, the rest of my weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if you got all of that, then well, if you do that, then you might be eligible to go on the top 10. Uh, that's so fun. That's so fun. Like uh, those. And what, those are the, what are the scores? So, As in, like, how do you uh, get a higher score? So this is how scores work. Basically, yeah. it's a complicated system, but for every step that you solve, like hypnosis or capture yeah. the flag, you get some score, and then you get a bonus if you are the first person to solve it or the second person to solve it. So that's how the score is calculated. And uh, those two on the top, uh, which got more than 10,000, they solved all the three, uh, the three steps. But even if you uh, finished uh, controlling your mind, there is still like uh, two bonus steps that to date nobody has solved. Uh, one really? is called the virus. And it basically, again, without giving away too many details, uh, you need to come up with a spell. Um, and I'm not going to tell what a spell is. Uh, you need to come up with a spell with the ability to copy itself into the brain of an uninfected skull and spread from there to other uninfected skulls that do not take yeah. potions. That was uh, okay. This, uh, so you need to find a way to create some kind of virus that would uh, copy itself from one skull to another skull to another. Again, all that without any <laughs> electrical connection. Sorry, um, I just I just saw the the name of the two skulls, Napoleon Bonaparte and deceased. I just like oh, sorry. <laughs> oh my lord, <laughs> sorry. Carry on. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, dear. and if that's not enough, like if this didn't didn't make you cry and pull all the hairs out of her head, then there is like a <laughs> bonus number two, 
which has, uh, there is also uh, another flag, uh, bonus flag. There is this flag here that you have to find. And this one is uh, much more complex to extract uh, comparing to the uh, first flag. So, okay. yeah, so to date, nobody sold either of uh, this, uh, one, neither of these uh, bonus stages. They are still open and they're like, there is still uh, space in the high score table. And I'm really looking forward to see who will be the first person to uh, find or to create a virus or to uh, break into the medulla oblongata. Thanks, Chris, for teaching me that word. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. And have you, um, so how, so there's only two people who've completed the whole thing. Do you think right. you've made it too difficult? Do you think you've made it too difficult or are you enjoying your like fiendish challenges? So, uh, th that was a thing that unfortunately I couldn't really answer until I shipped the product. This is like, uh, there is something very frustrating about shipping this kind of product because Usually when you are working on something, you tell people about your progress, about the challenges, and you share. Uh, and believe yeah, me, of course. I had so many uh, things I created for this challenge because I also had to solve it myself in order to see how uh, feasible it is. And I created so many tools and uh, did so many things that I shouldn't have and learned uh, my lessons. So. I wish I could share off that, but you know, I didn't. On the other hand, I didn't want to give away any of the um, any of the uh, like anything that would any of the uh, secrets. Yeah, that would spoil it. And it, you can see, like, this is uh, version one point oh, and my intention was to get it right at the first time because I didn't want to ship it to uh, one hundred people and then tell them, you know what. Uh, I have a mistake, you need to refresh it. And then if they refresh it, then I can't give them the flags. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. it would be with dummy flags, not the real ones. And uh, they would need hex extra hardware. So I really had to get it right, not only uh, without too many bugs, uh, but also like make it the right level of difficulty. And, you know, it's like, shooting in the air with your eyes covered because i can know what's challenging for me but is it challenging for someone else are there any things that loopholes uh, that i haven't thought about for instance with this tiny uh, friend here with the tiny ctf uh it has like uh four stages and the third stage was supposed to be really hard, but then uh, after I released it, I figured out there is, uh, somebody told me, uh, I found a, a much easier way to, f to solve it. So mm. it was still challenging, but not as, not the way I hoped. Um, so we discussed so far, based on the feedback from the a few people who solved it, it's more or less where I am like it's hard it's difficult but it's uh, it's possible and i think uh from what i've heard so far step one usually takes uh anywhere between a few minutes and two to three hours then step mm. two takes like three to five hours and step three takes like eight hours and more so it really like it's increasing level of difficulty uh, and that's really what i wanted to achieve so somehow and I, i'm still having a hard time believing it myself it seems like i nailed it <laughs> i'm glad i'm glad that so have you taken it to any events i guess if you made it in 2020 it's not actually seen uh, it's not been out in the hardware ecosystem right of course so normally with these kind of things you'd be taking them to different hacker events and that's the way that because i mean like badge life like but these but this badge culture comes from um from events right you know it like originated at defcon uh, with joe grand 
and and like it, it's very much like an event centered thing so I was you know like I was wondering like how much of a different experience it's been for you doing um doing a hardware puzzle without being able to go to conferences it must I don't know I, I imagine like when you designed this you probably imagined that you'd be going to conferences and hacker events right with it Right, I, I didn't even think about uh, crowdfunding. That was um, my uh, life partner who told me, hey, my amazing life partner who told me, hey, why do you want to try crowdfunding? And um, I must say that being uh, forced to stay at home uh, and mm -hmm. doing all of this online uh, made me come up with things like this skull burger menu. So I spent the time working on so this is actually like I created this animation for the menu in the side, but then I turned it into a standalone game. So it's yeah, very yeah. fun. Thanks. I, I like just did things, but I think the highlight was uh, the campaign. The uh, have you read any of the updates or, uh, of the campaign updates? Yeah. Look. Also, I just a shout out for Joe Grant, who I mentioned as one of the um, originators of Badge Life. He did, in fact, just make a pizza compass. I don't know if you've seen that, Uri. It's a really no. cool badge that is, it's a, it's a badge, a wearable badge um, that um, takes you to nearest pizza. Um, and that's, that's what it does. <laughs> so uh, it's a really... That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really fun. Uh, I think I think he did it for Wired. I think there's a video on how he made it and how it works on the um, on Wired. Um, I'll pop a link so, to that. But, but yeah, I, Joe Grant did just make a pizza. You don't have conferences, <laughs> but then you find other ways to entertain yourself. Yeah. So, are you, are you going to bring it to conferences next year? Um, probably know. not, because I think um, it's. When you just uh, look at it, it has this only feature, which is cool for like five minutes. But then yeah. to get to get really uh, to get to know her really good, you need to spend a couple of hours with her and this source code, course code, open course code. Open um, course code. <laughs> yeah, and it's I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong, and tell me if I'm. But I, I have a feeling like this is like. A, 10 seconds gimmick in a conference and then people move on. They, they won't really like have the patience to, um, you know, spend <laughs> time a few hours during the conference trying to hack into her brain. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know about that. Me. I don't know about that. Maybe it's the kind of conferences that I go to, but that's exactly the kind of thing you would do is just like sit down. I mean, um, one of the conferences I go to um, a lot is the Supercon conference called, uh, have you been? Um, the Hackaday Supercon conference. Um, I've been in it's the really, online really good. one. But mm, it's it's like a good one. Um, there's a there's like a big hacker table outside. So it's in LA every November, obviously, you know, not in recent times mm -hmm. because of the whole, you know, plague. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, people do just sit down for hours and hours and hack on things next to each other um, in the back alley of the supply frame offices in LA um, in Pasadena. Um, and the same in, um, so one of the, so I've just moved to the US as you probably know, but the, a lot of the German, like a lot of the, the European hacker conferences, that's exactly this, like, you know, you sit down, you sit there for hours and you work like hack on stuff together. It's exactly, if, if you've been to Congress, do you know what Congress, Congress? is? No. Yeah. I'm not very really strong with hardware you've go. conferences. <laughs> You got to go. It's not. It's not a hardware conference. It's a hacker conference. There are. I mean, I. I always hang out in the hardware hacking village. But um, um Congress is, and I'm on like a. It, Congress is like the most amazing hacker conference in in my mind. Anyway, there's. Um, it's run by Where CCC, is which is the. It's 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 just outside of Berlin in a, a city called Leipzig, and basically mm -hmm. it's between Christmas and New Year's every year. Not last year, but they might do it this year. We're not sure. Um. It, they hold, oh, there's this huge body. conference center. And yeah, and they, they give basically somehow they've managed to um, take over this whole conference center. They have like um, tables everywhere, hacking areas. They have like, it's huge, it's huge. There's like two clubs inside of it that they put on like just full of like hackers dancing to techno and having a nice time. Um, and and um, and this is exactly the kind of thing. You just sit down in the hardware hacking area um, 
uh, Mitch Altman runs the hardware hacking area. Um, who's a, a hardware hacker? Um, one of the one of the people who founded Noisebridge actually. Um, and he um, and he's got like a, a, like an area with like you know fifty tables with like soldering irons all across all of them, and like people sitting there with like. Um, electronics and their laptops open and sitting there for like hours together working on whatever the badge is. So the last badge I saw from CCC was at the summer camp, the summer CCC camp, um, which um, happened the last time we had a summer that there was any kind of camp camps in. Um, and they had a really awesome badge for that called the Cardio. Um, it's Card 10, essentially. Um, and it was a wearable wristwatch badge um, that also had um, like ECG monitors and so on. And it was a super cool one. And in that, like, yeah, people would just sit around for the entirety, really, the majority of the event and like make apps for it or like hack on it or like try and solve things or try and make cool things with it. So like, I think that people would definitely, ha I mean, it depends on the conference, obviously, like if it's just an, or like if it's just, you know, if that's not the focus, but like if, if, if it's like a proper, you know, like hacker conference, then yeah, people will sit there for like eight hours um, and, and only do that, you know, um, just for the experience of doing, of trying to solve a puzzle with a whole bunch of other people on the same table as you, you know, it's actually a really enjoyable, wonderful thing to do. And that's, that's what I really like about badge culture is, just sitting down with other people and working out how to, to use it and working out how to use a new piece of technology or whatever. So, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> here conference organizers out there, if you feel like, uh, you know, uh, having a bunch of people sitting around the table for a few hours and getting their minds uh, trying to solve this puzzle, <laughs> Oh, it's hypnotizing me. It's hypnotizing yeah, yeah. me. Yeah, wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> I have another Agnosis device. That's another project I've worked on. So working on what? a puzzle. What is this? Yeah. What is it? What is so this? This is my, this is is my that PCD. Latest. Yeah, that's my latest uh, hardware project. It's called Splendida. Yeah. So that's one side. And the other yeah. side is LEDs. Whoa. Whoa, that's, that's a lot of LEDs. 200 is that Fibonacci? Yeah. Exactly. It's like, uh, yeah. uh, I don't remember Vogel's spiral, but it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, the Fibonacci yeah. Uh, arrangement. There there, is like, yeah. There's a guy called Jason Kuhn who makes really awesome ones of those as well. He's, um, he's, he's got, he's got really, really awesome. great range of them. Yeah, yeah. And it reminds me of that. And hang on, hold it back up. Hold, the, hold your PCB back up again. I just wanted to give, uh, if you, Flip it over again. I just wanted to see it. That here we are. Like there we are. We've got an open hardware logo and a keycad logo as well there. So it's good to see that you are using and wrapping um, the open source CAD design that is keycad. Um, so definitely. Yeah. If <laughs> anybody wants to see that. the design files are on GitHub, I can uh, share the link. Yeah. And there is even uh, some guy uh, made it from uh, Russia, made this diff diffuser. So, wow, um, that's so beautiful. Oh, we've got Thomas Flemmer in the house. Who is that? Look who Thomas we've got. Th Thomas Flemmer, he makes amazing badges. He's um, from, he's one of the, the Nordic badge hackers. Um, and he does like some really beautiful work. Would really recommend you check out his work on Twitter if you don't know him already. Um, yes, I will ask yeah. you for his Twitter account because, but hi Thomas, yeah, yeah. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Thomas. Yeah. yeah, he does some really awesome stuff. I met him when I was in, um, What's the name? Is it Labitat, the name of the hackerspace in Copenhagen? Um, I could be wrong about that. But yeah, yeah I think it is Labitat. They're really good. They've got Labitat. I think they've got like um, they've got like this old bunker in their back garden. It's one of uh, one of a really one of the more interesting um, Scandi hackerspaces that I've been to is the 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 one in Labitat was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas uh, Thomas is in the chat. I'm gonna get and drop your handle. I'll, um, he's he's done some really beautiful stuff um, that you should definitely check out. Some really good, like uh, the beautiful Viking sailing ship PCB badge. Um, 
if you give me a second, I can even try to yeah, uh, yeah. wire it to my Arduino and show you uh, what yeah, it's we go. capable of. So th uh, this is Thomas. Uh, this is Thomas's um, Twitter handle. For those of you who don't know Thomas, you should definitely like he he does some like super mwah, excellent PCB designs um, and some beautiful badge designs too. So definitely go check him out. Okay. Thank you for coming and saying hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. So what are you working on? Yeah, tell us what you're working on, Thomas. Oh, my God. That's so beautiful. Wow. That's so pretty. Is that the diffusion on top of the, the, the board? The diffusion. That's and the so magic. It's really a talented guy from Russia. His name is uh, Twitter is wow. Elvico, and he's been making like amazing uh, patterns with fast LEDs. Do, do you know the fast LED library? Yeah, yeah. So of he, he, I, he's like a, a very talented fast LED artist. He's making really cool things with the uh, fast LED. Um, Amazing, I, I and he did. Interested. And so, because you released your board files, he was able to make a diffuser based on that, um, based on your board, right? And is that so, diffuser also made of? What's the diffuser made of? So the diffuser is three uh, D printed. Um, what happened is that uh, I've seen him making all those uh, cool uh, patterns. So I sent him uh, one of those boards, and he just. Uh, sent me uh, 3D printable files uh, a few days after we received this uh, this board. We've and we've got a request to show it again. Um, I'm going to actually spotlight you. Um, hang on, wait. One I'm gonna put this I just one. Uh, need to rewire it to the Arduino because oh, it's really too fast. Okay. All right. I'm going to spotlight it. I'm going to spotlight you. Wait a minute. <gasps> so cool it's so cool why is it so cool and that's 3d printed external and then what's doing the actual diffusion uh it's i don't know if you how you say it in english but it's like this uh, baking paper that you use when you bake cakes or yeah we call it baking paper <laughs> so baking paper yeah it's uh yeah. let me no way that's baking moment. paper and 3d print that's awesome. Yeah, baking paper and then like a very thin, I think two millimeter uh, plastic on top of it that like uh, gives it this uh, shape. So That's this super is what cool. it looks like from the side. There is a spacer and then a few screws and a brilliant guy who designed it. And like, uh, I don't know if I can find it really quick, but he, he made really cool things with, uh, let me share a link with you. So uh, you can see some of the things people have been making with this. Uh, there we <laughs> yeah, did you get my link? Uh, yeah, I did. Hang on a second. Let me just pop it in a place where everybody can see it. So this and is. Oh, I failed to copy and paste correctly. <laughs> ah, that happens all Pushing. the time. Best software bags are just a uh, failure to copy and paste. Here we go. All right. Look, I can even do it as a marquee. Look at this. Add the banner. Let's click on it. Wow. <laughs> All right. I'm just having too much fun with my software here. <laughs> so that's where you can go and find that. Um, and then apparently, hang on. Wait a second. Let's just take this banner off. And comments. Here we are. So. Um, Jason said that this guy is the artist. You think is this a, is that the the Russian guy that you were talking about who did the three D printer thing? L D I R underscore K O. Yes, L D I R K O. Yeah, yeah. He's also been in touch with uh, Jason, and I think uh, he wanted to design something similar. Or I, I know he was yeah. really interested in Jason's work, uh, just like me. Yeah. Really admires what Jason does. Um, hi, Jason, hi, Jason. We all love you. <laughs> we think yeah, you're amazing. I mean, 
Uh, have you seen his new uh, coasters uh, that looks like uh, chips? Are you kidding me? Those coasters are amazing. It's so fun. So I think that's the only chips that we'll get hold of in 2021 for the rest of the year. So uh, for those of you that haven't seen, yeah, if, if for those of you that haven't seen Jason's work, so Jason does loads of really cool things. But the thing we're talking about here is he makes these like completely ridiculous slash amazing, um, like laser etched, I'm assuming, um, slate coasters made to look like different chips like your sam d51 or whatever you know and uh, you definitely definitely go and check out um jason's twitter it's always full of like amazing ridiculous things including fibonacci things and um and these and these um, laser cut chips um oh thomas says in denmark they changed baking paper to be brown not as good as diffusion oh, that's sad times that's sad times uh, we want that nice uh, nice clear stuff. i tell you what I tell you who, who else i saw doing something really cool for diffusion for these kinds of things was um this guy called arturo who's a you you probably thomas knows arturo he's um he's a, he's another scandy hacker um and he did um for the ccc the, C, the, C, the, C, the that i was talking about earlier the congress the chaos computing club they have like this logo of like a rocket and he used um hot glue you can get um so this is my hot glue gun right so you can use hot glue to diffuse leds by just basically like gluing on top of um that but you can also what he did which i've never seen before is you can get black hot glue so he used black hot glue to diffuse all of these leds in a 3d printed mold and it looked so dope like it was just like i can't believe that's just some leds and some black hot glue because it looked super dope so definitely check out um arturo's like and i don't know if that's on the internet anymore but it probably is but yeah so it was a, a 3d printed case like um outside then you put this hot glue inside of it and then you smush the leds into the hot glue while it was still warm but not hot so it was a uh, mounting as well as diffusion that was like a real fun tip but yeah. Oh yeah, here we are. That's what they're called. Macro chips. Macro, Macro chips. chips, right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Nice one, Jason. We all love micro chips. Uh, let's let's, uh, let's sure take this marquee. One more time. Marquee. Hang on, marquee. wait, I'll, I'll add your screen in. Marquee. marquee, like the best HTML tag of all time. It just just, just it bringing it works. back to the marquee. Here we are. It does still work. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, can you share my screen one more time? Yeah, yeah. You, if you share it, I can add it in. You can yeah, click so and click the little share button. I should be able to. The, the, the funny add thing it. is, my mouse stopped working for some reason. But of course. I try. <laughs> of course. I'm, of course. Uh, only right click is working. Why does? Is there any keyboard shortcut to screen sharing? Baking paper diffuser is definitely a novelty. I agree. I agree. It, Hold on, I'm grabbing another mouse. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I, it stopped working in the middle of the stream. Of uh, course, the, of course, the mouse stopped. It's got right. to, something's got to go wrong. <laughs> okay, so we got another one. Thank you, thank you, Logitech. And now I can share my screen with this mouse. Okay, right, this is just something All that right, I found. Let's add that in. Um, can you see my screen? Okay, cool. I can see so a screen. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is what we it's an Arduino simulator I'm working on, and this is like mm -hmm. some cool demo that uh, LDR code, the same guy, he did with uh, uh, an LED matrix. So uh, just watch yeah. it. I just love it. It's just like an Arduino Mega connected to an RTC and showing you the time while this uh, nice. this uh, sand is uh, piling in as uh, the time goes by. And there is also like this uh, small LCD screen that shows you the time uh, normally. But yeah, I really love what uh, the, the stuff that earlier who is using is doing is really creative. Not only like uh, that's with, really uh, creative. Yeah. So um, and uh, and really that's and that's this guy. Um, hang on a second. Um, I find it again in the comments. Oh, this guy, right? This guy is the, the yeah, is this LED same guy. Code. This is what we're looking at. So that's the name of the um, that's the name of the hacker artist who um, is doing these really amazing things with fast LEDs. That you're you're using some of these things. That's really awesome. This is really cool. I like the it, the, um, the the color gradient is beautiful as well. Actually, um, on the clock itself, 
What happens when the yeah. sand fills up? Well, it never does because it's like Tetris. It always falls down, as you can see. Like oh yeah, so uh, it, like it spreads further and further off screen. I see. Yeah. I, I think so. I never ran it for so long. Like we are running it for a minute already. But yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fast LED so, yeah, for the so, win. Fully agreed. No argument here. No argument here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Now it actually got into. Yeah. I think. I don't know. I mean, there is a source code here. So if you want, you can try to decipher what he did here and uh, see if he has any bugs. It's very cool. It's very cool. All right. We've been talking for nearly an hour and a half. I think it might be time to let you go to bed soon because it's really late where, in your part of the world, isn't it? So it's my afternoon, but it's like ridiculous, ridiculous o'clock with you. Um, so, but if, I'm, I'm, not rush, I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing. I'm just like mindful of the time. I'm mindful of your time. Like, um, but did you want to, is, is there anything else that you wanted to share with us? Um, like in, in like th that you've been that you've been up to, um, or any other fun facts about the skull, um, or any t hot tips for anybody? Uh, someone's asked what software I'm using. So I'm using um, Streamyard and OBS, Mark, um, plus a bunch of um, custom overlays that were made by um, by the lovely Gabe who works at Crowd Supply, who makes all our nice things and made all the uh, like did lots of the cool um, designs, uh, shark designs for Oshpark as well. Funnily enough, small world, isn't it? Hardware, cool. small world. Uh, he also yeah. made the, the the video for the skull. So if you watch this uh, campaign video for the skull, that's Gabe. Of course, work, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I Great admire video him. For the skull. He, yeah, he, he's fantastic. He's such a nice guy as well. We love, we all love Gabe. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah, Mark. Think, you're welcome. I think uh, we can finish with a small fun story about uh, the skull, the campaign. Um, so uh, this story is like uh, I, I just released today a new blog post telling uh, everything I learned, or like almost everything I learned throughout the campaign. It's the story of the skull campaign from the very beginning to mm. uh, successfully funding. It's the longest blog post um, I published in my life. It's like uh, 29 minutes read. Um, it's horribly long and it has all the gory details. So if you are, if you want to launch your own hardware campaign, then uh, that's I think that's a, a useful resource. Um, yeah. And then What's then and share... all? <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to, uh, and we can finish by sharing a small anecdote from the campaign, from the actual campaign. Um, so uh, it just happened so that we had a Black Friday during the campaign, and I was thinking really hard: should we do something special for Black Friday? Like usually everybody is doing uh, sales and discounts. So um, I decided to try and. Um, raised the price by 32 mm. cents for Black Friday. Uh, so there was a special sale on Black Friday where you could buy the skull for 32 cents more than the usual price. And someone actually purchased it. They 32 cents to get it on the special uh, Black Friday special. Black Friday special, you have to pay more. <laughs> It's I what, what I, mean, I did work. You got that. What did you spend that 32 cents on? Uh, the, the funny thing. Uh, I hope you spent it on something that, good. <laughs> so the funny thing is that Chris told me that uh, the, the billing system of crowd supply doesn't support fractions. So the, the listing <laughs> price would be uh, $20.32, $20 but it would just charge $20. But then. Uh, a week after we looked into the sales report and we we have seen that it actually charged uh, the, those 22 cents, even though it wasn't supposed wow. to, or we thought it wasn't supposed to. Um, so I think we uh, we wrote somewhere in the next update that if that person uh, wants that their money back, they can ask for like <laughs> a difference. Well, testing the limits. That's hilarious, that's hilarious. Thank, we've got 
a lovely comment here from the delightful Leon, who was actually the first guest ever on the Teardown sessions, um, who is a hardware hacker who works on, uh, who does things on crowd supply as well. Actually, he's got a campaign line now, which is a macro, a two key macro pad, um, which is open source hardware as well. So check that out. Um, and he's subscribed and hit the notification bell, which is definitely something you should do if you enjoyed this. Um, we have lots more exciting things planned over the next coming weeks. Um, and I also, I love this. So we've got the Cards Against Humanity business practices for your um, your fiendish, uh, your, your fiendish uh, Black Friday schemes. That was fun. Um, and if anybody wants to see um, see Uri's work, um, where's the best place to find you? Um, there is like a Discord space, Discord space, the Discord space of Wokwe where I hang around most of the day along with El Dirko and a few other. Uh, there is like Steve who commented at uh, the beginning and is also there, like very talented engineers that do all sort of crazy things and share their work. So that's uh, wokwe.com slash Discord. I'll also share the link. Um, you share that and, link, I can, I can attempt to copy and paste it. And for those of you who need uh, a better way to organize your DuPont wires, I just uh, spotted this on my desk. Uh, this might be a good answer for you. It's 3D printed. Oh, wow. What is that a jumper cable storage unit? Yeah, uh, it's like something I saw online and then I modeled one for myself and shared it on uh, Thingiverse. Uh, so if anyone wants but the that model, that might change just, my life. I will send you the link to the model. <laughs> That's amazing. I'll I'll put all of these. I'll put all of these links. I'm going to put them all in the YouTube description after this as well. So I'm going to put all the links to the Thingiverse, all the links to the Wakwe stuff, all of this kind of stuff. It'll all go in the YouTube description afterwards. So if you're watching this after time, which most of you will do, um, all of the information will be down there. <laughs> in the in the in the description so yeah very cool all right uri it's been an absolute pleasure to hang out with you and talk about badge hacking and um get to grips with your fiendish uh, skull um i'm definitely gonna give it a go this weekend um and see if i can make those those eyes flash i'll see if i can get the first secret i'll get, see if i can get her to unveil her first secret to me um here we are like there's the flashing again um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I believe in you. I believe in me too. I'm mostly just having fun pretending this is my face. This is my new mask from now on. I think I, this is just going to be my new Zoom. I'm going to I'm going to create a Zoom overlay that's just the skull, so nobody has to look at me. Like I I don't even have to like look at that. Yeah, push it forward. <laughs> I like it. My, we're okay. just absolute children. We're just absolute children. All right. I think this is the best way to leave. <laughs> I think we're, I'm just going to hang up, right? <laughs> All right. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you, Uri. I have been Helen. This has been Uri. You can find this. These have, this has been the Teardown Sessions. This is the skull. It's an amazing capture the flag puzzle that you will spend way too much of your life um, having fun with. Um, it's been really, really fun. And thanks, everybody, for hanging out. And we'll catch you all again at the next Teardown Sessions um, in a week or two. Um, see you later, everyone. Bye. <laughs>